Greetings, it is I, Tantus Nair of Anjakovin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time for D20 Modern, the modern take on the third edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Well, today we're going to start covering FX abilities. The special abilities, the magical supernatural abilities that may be in your games. Again, these are optional. You could keep it a completely realistic modern game. But let's start, of course, with magic. Magic are the abilities and spells of acolytes and mages, of creatures that can also use these spells or spell-like abilities. They come in two forms. Arcane spells draw directly on the mystical energies of the very universe, of the fabric of the power itself. They require great amounts of study and planning in order to be successful. Divine energies connect up with beings of greater power and channel their abilities in order to use their magic. They require meditation and then connecting to these higher beings or a level of faith itself in order to bring about this power. Arcane tends to have very dramatic effects. Divine tends to be utilitarian. Now, regardless of the type of it, Magic will, of course, be associated with a number of gestures, words, or materials that you require in order to successfully cast these spells. Basically, they are... <clears throat> this is the procedure that you'll be doing in order to successfully have the spell be cast. For every type of spellcaster, they will have a number of slots open to them. Basically, <clears throat> a number of spells that they can effectively memorize, have ready every day that they will prepare ahead of time. Wizards, mages, and other arcane users use a spell book, a collection of spells that they can study, meditate on, and fill their slots. Divine casters just need that meditation. They get divine inspiration, so they don't have to have a certain collection of spells optioned to them in order to memorize them. Every spell will, of course, have its gestures, its words, which will be signs that's being cast. It will also have an effect, which may have visual components. But the magic itself has no visual component. You will not see the actual magic. The gestures, the effect, you will see those. First and foremost, when you are selecting a spell to cast, you must meet the requirements. The requirements will depend, of course, on a number of factors. This could be your level itself, the level of the spell, information about the spell we're going to dive into. Each one will have, then, the requirements you're going to have to do. The gestures, the words, the materials. The ability to concentrate is a common factor amongst all of these. Everything else they will have in turn to a degree. Concentration can be difficult in the course of battle because you need that. It can be disrupted. Also, armor will disrupt your ability to concentrate too. There are certain spells which have the same spell under both arcane and divine lists. Then it will depend on who casts it as to if it's an arcane spell or a divine spell. If a mage casts it, it's arcane. If an acolyte casts it, it's divine. It's important to note that once you have cast a spell, that slot that you used in order to cast it, you cannot use again until you have fully rested and remeditated, basically recovering that slot's usage. So, once slot done, spell is done, you are set in not being able to use it until you rest up. Now, spells will have a certain number of characteristics to them that help to define them. First and foremost is its schools and subschools. I'm not going to go into details about the schools I have in other materials in this channel, but effectively every one of the schools has their own specialized abilities and own types of abilities. It will give a short description in the book about what they mean, and it will include information on each of those subschools. Each one of them basically helps to classify these spells down into different types and to give you an idea of the different types. Beyond that, they will have keyword classification that will be associated with the school. If you're looking at a line in the information, it will be in brackets after the school and subschool, subschool in parentheses. These are keywords which help to define it. This could be an elemental type of damage that it deals in particular. It could be something else. It gives you an idea of key elements related to this spell, which does, again, once again, classify it down even more. 
Now level defines the level of the spell. This is different than the level of the character you have. Level of the spell basically says you need a slot of this level in order to get this level spell memorized. I will have slots that I can access of certain level spells that as I level up, I get more of them. The higher level I am, the more levels of slots I get, the higher levels of slots. It might say I get a second level slot, then I can put a second level spell into my second level slot. If I know a third level spell, if I don't have a third level slot, I can't memorize it. Now, this isn't to say that you can't do some little tricks here. I can put a lower level spell in a higher level slot. Maybe I don't have any second level spells I want to memorize. I can memorize an extra first level in its place. I can also keep slots empty. I don't have to fill them with spells that I know. It is an option to do this. Now, every spell will, of course, have components. Every spell will at least have one of these components, whether it is verbal, somatic, verbal speaking, somatic, your gestures, a focus of some time, whether divine or normal, or material you're consuming. If it has a slash as part of one of these components, if it's the first part of the slash, this is the arcane spell version of the spell. If it's the second part of the slash, it's the divine spell version of the spell. Arcane and divine, and depending on the version you get, you either have this component or this component. That's what the slash means for components. Now, casting time is an important thing to talk about because most of the time they will tell you it takes you an action. This is effectively an attack action to cast that spell. Other times it might say it's a full round. This means it will take me a full round action. I can make a five foot step before, during, or after casting this spell but I cannot move because it's taking a full round. This spell doesn't actually take effect until the beginning of my next turn, even though I've taken the time to gesture it out on my turn in particular. If it says it's anything longer than that, it's considered every one of those rounds that I would be taking up full round actions. So if it says a minute, that's 10 full round actions that I will be taking in order to succeed at casting this spell. During this time, I can be disrupted. If someone deals you damage, you have to make a concentration check in order to avoid losing that spell. I can disrupt the casting of the spell and the magical energies because my concentration is disrupted by getting hit. Thing is about casting spells is it provokes attack of opportunities. It leaves yourself open. So if I'm casting a spell and I get attacked of opportunity, I could lose it. I could get smacked, lose the spell, I would have to make a concentration check with a DC based upon the damage I'm being dealt or lose it. But that's it for today. I introduced you to spells and magic as part of your FX abilities. I went over some of the basics of the spells, what it means to have them, the two types of them. I went over some of the characteristics of the spells themselves. In the next episode, we are going to continue where we left off Talking about avoiding those attacks of opportunity when casting spells, talking about concentration, and more of the spell's characteristics, and hopefully moving on to other abilities that you can get that are FX abilities. But if there are any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please just leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe at Church for the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon, link in the description below. There's some great rewards there. It helps to grow and improve the channel and the empire. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.